Welcome to the Learn Skin Podcast with Dr. Raja and Dr. Hadar, where they discuss all things skin. Skin is fascinating because it affects us in so many ways, like our health, psychology, and how we connect with those around us. This podcast delves into the art and science of skin care. A short disclaimer before we get to the good stuff. Dr. Raja Sivamani and Dr. Hadar Levtov are board-certified dermatologists. This podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only. All opinions shared do not express the views of Learn Skin. Neither this podcast nor any information contained within it are a substitute for professional care by a doctor or other qualified medical professional. This podcast does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. Hey, Raja, how are you doing today? Hey, Hadar, it looks like it's time for another podcast. Yes, it is. And today we are in for a truly special treat. We have someone from around my block, and I'm super proud to have Leslie Bauman here with us today. Would you like to tell us a little bit about her? Oh, absolutely. I've known about uh, Dr. Leslie Bauman for a while. I've been a little bit of a stalker, actually, I should say. So this is pretty exciting for me. Me so too. She's, 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 <laughs> She's known worldwide. She's quite renowned for coming up with a new way of thinking about skin types. She's published several books on cosmetic dermatology and uh, cosmeceuticals and cosmetic ingredients. She was faculty at University of Miami for quite a bit of time, and now she's opened up her own center, and, which is the Bauman Cosmetic and Research Institute. So she's got one foot in clinic and another foot in research. So, so I can't think of anyone better to talk about skin regimens and thinking about skin types than uh, Dr. Bauman. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really was looking forward to it. Yes, and it's great to have such an expert like you here, especially for someone like me, who sometimes I'm a practicing dermatologist, and uh, most of our listeners probably have patients in one capacity or another. And it's always a, a challenge to kind of, while we see a patient and thinking about many other issues that we have to go over with the patient, to think about how do we take into account the skincare regimen when we talk about treating disease, let's say a person with psoriasis, we got them better and now they want to know more about skincare. How do you approach that and take that into account when you see a patient? Well, I think, so skincare is my thing. I love skincare. I collect vintage skincare ads, and I have a vintage compact collection. And ever since I was a little girl, I've loved skincare, and I do research on it. And so I love to talk about skincare with my patients. But sometimes, as you mentioned, if they're coming to you for psoriasis, it's not always the first thing on their mind. So what we do is we have a questionnaire that we give every patient in the waiting room, and that questionnaire diagnoses their skin type. And then as part of the conversation, we discuss that. So for example, if they're there for psoriasis, we would just, we'd talk about their psoriasis and then we would say, and by the way, this is what you should be doing for your face. And then that kind of opens up the conversation. Some of them will want to talk about it at that visit. Uh, a lot of, some of them will want to talk about it at the next visit, but it's a very smooth way to bring up the conversation. Because what drives me crazy is that people are out there spending a fortune on their skin and they're using the wrong stuff. I mean, all the time, I'm sure you've heard it, people will say, oh, I went to Chanel and I bought this $300 cream and, and they're not wearing sunscreen every day. So I think we need to give them <laughs> advice. Yes. Good advice uh, or common sense is not very common, is it? Um, <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> And that is true, and I, and I love the idea of a questionnaire. What kind of topics do you, does your questionnaire cover in broad terms? Well, the questionnaire is actually a validated questionnaire that took me years to put together. It started out as 300 questions. Now it's down to three minutes. And it, it wow. determines which are, <laughs> it was a lot of work at the University of Miami. But it determines what your skin type is. So there are 16 different skin types or phenotypes. And each one of those skin types has different skincare needs. So it's a very quick and easy way to pinpoint which Bauman skin type you are. And then we have regimens already read, ready to go for each one of those types. So it's a very fast way to give them the accurate skincare products. So I think one of the things that I find really interesting about when we talk about skin types is that I feel that a lot of people when they go to shop for whatever they want to use for their skincare regimen, it's kind of a bit of guesswork, wouldn't you say? I mean, if they're going to say any big retailer, like whether it's Ulta or Sephora or just online, even with Amazon, sometimes you're lucky if you have someone that's grading stars, but it's always been a question of mine is how do you know that the other people that are grading that particular skincare have your skin type? Otherwise, how relevant is it? And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on 
you know, how people have traditionally tried to find their skincare products and why you think knowing your skin type is a significant advantage in figuring out a right regimen. Well, it's true. It's very difficult for patients and consumers to go to the store and look at the shelves and they're overwhelmed and they usually choose by packaging or celebrity endorsement or something their friends told them. And that doesn't tell them at all what is right for them because they may not have the right skin type. So there's a lot of guesswork for the patients. But, you know, there's a lot of guesswork for the dermatologists as well. So when we see our patients, most dermatologists are seeing 100 to 120 patients a day, and the average germ spends three to six minutes with their patients. So they don't really have time to sit down and really assess all the different factors of the skin. And how many times have patients joked that they have acne and then they come in for their appointment and their acne clears up right before their appointment? So when we look at them, we might not realize how severe their acne is. So using a questionnaire I mean, helps us as dermatologists as well because it gives us this historical perspective that we wouldn't have just by looking at their skin. So I've spent years validating that questionnaire, and I know that the questions will give me an accurate assessment of how much sebum they make, how their barrier is, if, it's, if their skin's holding onto water properly, what their chances are of inflammation, and what kind of pigmentation issues they've had in the past. And those things you don't really see by looking at them. It also asks about lifestyle habits. So if they're in the sun four hours a day, it tells you. So all those things are taken into account. And it, it is difficult for any doctor or any person recommending skincare to think about all those things. So even if you looked at someone and, and knew what their skin type was, there's still a lot of things that you need to know. And that's what I'm going to be talking about at my IDS lecture in October. It's October 5th, Saturday, 8.30 in the morning. I hope everyone will wake up and come because, <laughs> it is, and we'll, you yes. know, I'm going to be on East Coast time, so I'm going to be there and I'm ready to talk. And it's my favorite talk because it talks about all the science of the ingredients and how they react with each other. So not only do you have to worry about what is the patient's skin type, you also have to worry about what ingredients are right for that skin type. And you have to worry about what products you're putting on in what order because they're all going to affect each other. So there's many layers of the onion that you need to consider. Yes, I can't wait for that talk. And I can guarantee you everybody will be up and ready to go, including myself. I'll be there in the first row. And I wanted to ask you because you mentioned a questionnaire. Do you think now that we're moving into artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence, do you think at the end of the day, do you need the dermatologist or a skincare provider to be there to interpret the survey? Or do you think at some point we'll get to this point where you just plug in a few things into the computer and it spits out a regimen? Well, there's a lot of companies out there that claim to tell you what your skin type is and they use questionnaires, but they're not accurate and they haven't gone through all the years of scientific vigor that we have. But with ours, anybody could use it. It would be effective whether you were a dermatologist or not, but we're only allowing medical providers to use it. You actually have to go to what we call a skin type solutions approved physician, and that's somebody that applies to be one of our people and, and we train them. And so we feel that there's so much science and cosmeceuticals these days that you really need a medical provider's advice. So we're only allowing uh, the patients to get that quiz and find out their skin type through their medical provider. Yeah, I think that's a great approach because even when I look at a patient in front of me, and even if I ask them question, and even without a validated questionnaire, there's so many things to take into account. And sometimes even just trial and error can help because you see the patient, they come and follow up, you can tweak it a little bit. So to me, the suggestion that just one little piece of data will give you the, it's going to be the end all and be all of, of, of your regimen, seems to be not connected to reality, at least in my reality. I also think that people's skin type will change. Do you find that now that you've done this for many years, do you find that the skin types change or have some nuances and you see them in follow-up? They do change, and actually we want them to change. So the way my skin typing system works is there, it identifies four barriers to skin health. One is dehydration, one is inflammation, one is disordered pigmentation, and one is poor lifestyle habits. So it um, identifies those, and then when we give them the skincare and the educational material, the goal is to have, their, have those barriers go away, and their skin type will slowly improve. So the perfect skin type is a 10. So to get to a perfect 10, there's actually at each doctor's visit different steps you go through. 
So for example, if somebody has pigmentation and inflammation and dehydration, you can't, and aging as well, you can't really give them a lot of really strong anti-aging medications on the first visit because their barrier is impaired. They're going to absorb too much. They're going to get side effects. A lot of the depigmenting ingredients are going to irritate them and they're already having inflammation. So we train the doctors that use our software that first you hydrate the skin and calm the inflammation, then you see them back in a month. And then you can add some pigmentation and some targeted things to get rid of pigment and start talking to them about their lifestyle habits. And it's really a three-month plan in the beginning. To, and every visit, their skincare regimen gets tweaked a little bit depending on how compliant they're doing and how their skin type has changed. And also, even if they weren't going through the process, hormones, moving to a different geography, like going from Miami to Denver, right. things like that will also change your skin Absolutely. type. Absolutely. Leslie, one of the questions that I have in regards to learning about ingredients and whatnot, you know, because they don't teach this in residencies and dermatology residencies too much. However, I think many of us end up learning it kind of on the fly as we go. What are some ways that people can start to really put together the science of ingredients and, you know, make it a bit more of a formal learning process? Uh, I guess in a roundabout way, I'm asking, how did you pick up a lot of this stuff and the knowledge around ingredients? Well, I've been writing a column for Dermatology News for over 20 years, and every month I write on a different ingredient, so I've sort of learned over time. But the problem is it's hard. Once you learn the ingredients, you still need to learn a lot about how they're formulated and which ingredients work well with other ingredients. So, for example, benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide works by making free radicals that go out and kill the acne bacteria. But those same free radicals will inactivate other ingredients. So you may know that green tea is great for aging, but if you put green tea on an older woman who also has acne and you give her benzoyl peroxide, the benzoyl peroxide is going to inactivate it. So unfortunately, there's so much more to know than just the ingredients. So you need to know what ingredients are right for each skin type, and then you need to know which ones you can't put with other ones. And you also need to know things like how the cleansers and moisturizers are going to affect the penetration and the efficacy. And that's really what my talk is going to be about, is talking about how pH and chemical reactions and what ingredients don't like each other and, and all those things you need to think about when you're designing the regimen. No, I think this is fantastic. And it kind of leads into the next topic of discussion, which is when we're thinking about physician dispensed or practitioner dispensed skincare market, we know that's expected to increase over the next five years. And so what is your advice for folks, especially practitioners and physicians that want to become a part of this trend? How can they do that in a responsible way? So the physician dispensed skincare market is the largest growing segment of the skincare market in the world, but and especially in the U.S., it's going to grow over 10%, which is a lot. And not that many doctors are successfully selling skincare products. One of the reasons is they're not comfortable bringing up the topic with their patients. They don't really know enough about skincare. A lot of doctors don't believe in it because they have never really known how to do an efficacious regimen, so they haven't really seen results. So the first thing they need to do is, is make the commitment that they're going to do skincare. And it's not about selling skincare to your patients. It's about educating them. So I actually have a company called Skin Type Solutions that doctors use my software, and it's the questionnaire. It identifies the skin type, and it automatically generates a regimen. And the doctor or the medical provider can, can choose what brands they want to sell. Over 40 brands are included. And we recommend that you don't sell just one brand and you don't have your own private label because patients are smart and they know that different companies have things that are better. So one company might have a better vitamin C and another company might have a better um, sunscreen. So you pick what brands you want to sell and it's all automated and it takes all the science into account. And that makes it very easy for you to do it. But you have to be committed. If you don't believe that it's important for your patients to use the right skincare every day, then you're not going to be successful at skincare retail. And back when I was just coming out of my residency. There was this whole talk about if it was ethical or not to sell skincare. And I very strongly believe it is unethical not to sell skincare. If you're a dermatologist, who else in the world are your patients going to be able to get the proper advice from? Somebody who cares about the outcomes, compares about, 
cares about skin health, understands the science, it is really our obligation, in my opinion, to give our patients the correct advice. Otherwise, they're going to be spending a fortune on stem cell creams and all this, the junk out there that doesn't do anything. I think this is a really important point that we become the conduit for giving really responsible education to folks. So thank you for bringing that up. I think that's a, a really important point. And then when you're thinking about selling uh, private label products, you know, a funny little story about that. You know, I've been able to sometimes they'll list ingredients on these products. And if you put it into Google, you can sometimes figure out who the original um, uh, the branding company is that'll put out these products for you that you can private label. Mm -hmm. I think it's like uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. It is like six degrees of Kevin Bacon. One thing I like about the systems where, and I, I'd like you to talk a little bit about, about the science of the software, if you don't mind, Leslie, just because in your, in your particular software, you're allowed to have your own multiple brands on the platform and it's not, it's agnostic to any one brand. Is that correct? Yes. So how does the system in, a, in effect work? Basically, are you matching skin types to ingredients in effect? How, how does it kind of broadly work without giving away the secret sauce, of course? So it's very complicated and I have three patents on it, but I'll do my best to explain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you think about a regimen, uh, let's say there's five steps in the morning, like a cleanser and an eye cream and a serum and a moisturizer and sunscreen. If you look at, let's say, the third space in that regimen, that we call a slot. So that might be um, that, let's say the patient has rosacea. So let's say it's an anti-redness serum. And so we would call that the anti-redness serum slot. So in my patent, I've already figured out what can and cannot be in that product. So we, um, the companies come to us and we test their products and make sure not only that those ingredients are in that product, in that anti-redness product, but that it doesn't have ingredients it can't have and that it's compatible and has all the right things, the right pH, the right fatty acids, um, all the other things you need to take into account for what's coming before and after it on the regimen. So that's why it's so complicated because each slot has all these different rules that go into it. Now, someday I'm going to have software that will just read the barcode on the product and tell me, okay, this is going to fit in that slot. But right now my brain has to do it. So that's why it takes a while to add new brands into our system. And that's why we're so happy. We have over 40 already. It's because I need to test each individual product and make sure that when it pops into those slots on the regimen, it's going to enhance the efficacy of the regimen. So sometimes people will come to me and say, well, I really like X product from this brand. How come it's not in your system? Well, it won't be in the system if it's going to make the regimens less efficacious. If for any reason it's not going to work, it can't be in the system. And not all products fit the criteria of what we need. Again, it's all about the ingredients. It's a very ingredient-driven thing. And and my talk is going to talk a lot about things like hyaluronic acid. You'll see hyaluronic acid in a lot of skincare products, and that actually greatly affects the penetration of products that you put around it. Uh, hyaluronic acid makes things penetrate better. So you might want that if you're doing a very expensive anti-aging serum like a vitamin C that has trouble getting in. But if you're treating acne and somebody's using these irritating acne meds, those hyaluronic acid moisturizers will make the irritation and the side effects worse. So each one of those slots is, has been tested. So I joke that our system has been tested on dermatologists because we have 175 <laughs> doctors using the system. Most of them are dermatologists. And right. so we started in 2014. So all of our regimens have been very well vetted by, the, by top dermatologists around the country. That's great. And thank you so much for giving us all this information. We are we can, I personally cannot wait for your talk to put some of those details into place and help uh, all the practitioners guide them as they try to negotiate these uh, tricky corners with the uh, patients asking about their skin care. There's so much more to learn, I'm sure, and we're all going to uh, be there on that Saturday morning eager after a good yoga session. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> that makes two to of us. Talk. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I really appreciate you taking the time here to be with us on this podcast. I know that everybody listening are eager to, uh, to hear you talk a little more.
Thank you. If people want to learn more, the website is STS, which stands for Skin Type Solutions. It's STSFranchise.com, or they can email me at drbdrb at skintypesolutions.com, or they can come to my talk and learn more about it. It's easier to understand when you see all the visuals. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll be sure to put all that on our social media for our listeners to follow. Okay. And on LinkedIn, I have a lot of educational material too. I'm kind of a LinkedIn junkie. So I think um, you and I've talked on LinkedIn before. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Well, Dr. Leslie Bauman, it's been an honor and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'll see you in October. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Learn Skin Podcast with Dr. Raja and Dr. Hadar. We would like to take this moment to tell you about our upcoming second annual Integrative Dermatology Symposium to be held at the Coronado Island Marriott in San Diego, California. This program is an educational experience jam-packed with information, including case-based discussions and multiple perspectives on topics such as psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, diet and skin microbiome, cannabinoids, hair loss, traditional Chinese medicine, and much, much more. Go to www.integrativedermatologysymposium.com and register today. We look forward to seeing you there.